Okay, so I've got all the beadboard, uh, at least with one coat of the top coat, and I've filled any of the little cracks or spaces that might have been between old beadboard that has shrunk or moved. Um, I put one coat on the wall of its color. So now I'm going to go ahead and trim out the edges, and then I'll put a second coat on. And I've also got to put a second coat on the ceiling. You can see it's a bit patchy in spots, so definitely want a second coat. Good job. Just finished the final coat on the walls and edged it. And Jessica edged all the lower parts and it looks great. I put in this light. We actually just moved this from the dining room. I like it. I don't think it's original. Um, it's probably from the 70s or 80s, but I still think it's cute. And everything else is so gray and clean in here that we Jessica thought that would be cute to have a little color. Anyway, new fridge. Right here I'm going to build a shelf between these two cabinets that's going to have our convection microwave under here and then like a little wine rack or something underneath it. That's the idea. We're getting closer. So of course these countertops aren't stained yet. I'm just laying them up here to figure out where I need to cut them. The biggest problem is that the walls are probably not square. So I can't make these come together perfectly when it's up against the wall. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I need to cut a slight angle on this so that this countertop will meet up without a gap on that countertop because obviously the room's not perfectly square. Okay, that worked out pretty good. Uh, keep in mind, this is not a square corner, so this is not actually a straight cut as, as perpendicular to this edge. It's actually at an angle, but that's a pretty good match so far. Um, I might still do a little bit of sanding on this side, but also from underneath, I'm going to use pocket hole screws to bring the two together and keep them uh, flush. Okay, this piece is going to work out real nice. You'll see the stove and the cabinet will butt up against each other perfectly. So there's no overhang on this side on purpose. Um, and the reason I cut this one first before fitting this one is obviously so I can just use this one as an actual template. Okay, I'm doing a little test patch here with this Danish oil. I've used this on a, a door in the laundry room and I really liked it. I've done some research and it's supposed to be good for countertops. Um, you just have to let it cure and completely soak in. So a lot of people say give it like a whole week before you actually use the countertop, especially the first time you apply it, uh, just to make sure there's no film. Supposedly this stuff doesn't just stay on the surface, it soaks in and encapsulates the wood fibers and uh, soaks into the fibers. So it's supposed to be pretty good. And then also I'm going to take some fine sandpaper, about 200 to or 220 grit, and uh, give this a once over just to clean it up before I start sanding, uh, sanding for the final time. All right, we're finally getting to the fun part. So that's the first coat of Danish oil. And I'm going to let that soak in for about 30 minutes. And then we'll give it a second coat, let that one soak for about 15-30 minutes, and then just buff it off with a, with a dry rag. And then it's basically got to sit kind of overnight um, before you really want to do much with it after that. But it's fully cured uh, within a couple of days, and then, um, and then you're good to go. And then you can put food on it, and it's safe, and all that. 
this is the second coat. Let this one dry for about 15 minutes and then I'll buff it down. Okay, we got the countertops finished. I'm just letting them uh, cure overnight before I really handle them too much. Anyway, wired up the uh, fridge socket and put the fridge in. Ladies love new fridges. Touched up some paint in the cabinets. Um, pocket hole screws to pull these seams together and keep them flush. And then I'll, from the underneath, I'll screw through to the top to connect the cabinets to the top, to the countertop. Next, it's on to either windows or I still have to build like a, a hutch. Just a quick tip. This is an old sink that I bought and this was basically fused on. I couldn't turn the the large lock nut off. So I took my little Dremel here and uh, just cut a slit through this and then it just slips right off pretty easy after that. Thank you.